space frame chassis, a very aerodynamic body, a strong engine, and a world-class driver. Formidable combination yeah. for anyone, frankly, to try and keep up with. Box tick, box tick, box yeah. tick, yeah. Now, what about second place now? Because this is where the battle will be. It is Ollie Bryant being caught by Mike Jordan. And Andrew has dropped away, hasn't he, over the course of a couple of laps. Mike, in fairness to him, has sorted out Andrew. He's pulled away to the tune of two and a half seconds. Yeah, and that's going to run and run on the drive home, isn't it? <laughs> Could be a quiet supper tonight, couldn't yeah. it? Right, so uh, there is Mike Jordan up the curve in the number 46 TVR. But uh, as they come over the brow, the next target for Mike Jordan is going to be the number one Cobra. Is he going to be able to get close enough? That gap was 1.2 seconds. So again, the cars for second place together. Look, Mike Jordan about to make his move on Ollie Bryant. Ollie not giving Mike as much room as he did Andre Lotterer, is he? He covers that one off as they drop down towards Woodcut. So Lotterer is away and gone. Mike Jordan trying to find a way through as well. Now he's caught up to the Cobra. And where does the move come? Is it going to come out of the chicane? Let us see. Lotterer does lead of those that have made a pit stop. The gap is extending, so Jordan knows that he's got to get past and soon. This is on board with Mike Jordan in the TBR. Yeah, and he's going to have to work hard to line Ollie Bryant up again for an attempt to pass. Mike getting a little bit loose. And the TBR is really, really nervous, but it is fast. He's got Bryant just ahead, punching a hole for him in the air. You do get a bit of a slipstream, a little bit of a toe maybe down the back straight. Doesn't necessarily help all that much in these historic cars, but Bryant, meanwhile, driving the wheels off the Cobra, almost cart-like in style, flicking it left, flicking it right, getting the car nice and straight before he applies the power down through the dip. Now, will he go defensive? Jordan is just a bit too far back. That allows Bryant to stay on his normal racing line. A nice wide turn into an apex at the 90-degree right-hander of Lavin. That gives him a nice strong exit and a good car length and a half over Jordan on the run down to Woodcut. He'll probably go defensive again. Bryant doing so in absolutely the right way, going early to the right-hand side. That tells Jordan, I'm going here, I'm staying here. If you want to go by me, you've got to go left. But he's been far more defensive against Mike Jordan in the uh, TBR here, the Griffith 400, than he was against Andre Lotterer, wasn't he? So Lotterer had a relatively easy pass, whereas Mike Jordan is having to work oh so hard to gain the place here as they come now over the timing line. You can see just a little digital readout there on Mike Jordan's dashboard. That will be giving him not only the lap times as he crosses the start-finish line, but also giving him live updates around the circuit about his pace compared to that car's previous best during this race. Now, the pit window is closed, and according to the TSL screen, the Shepherd Padmore car that leads on the road has not yet been in. So there's another team that have got it wrong on pit stop, seemingly, because that hasn't been in. And also shown as not having stopped is the Sean Lynn Marino Frank Hitty Cobra. But I was pretty sure we'd seen that. So maybe there's actually a glitch in the timing, well, because that car definitely did stop. Yeah, but did Marino not say they had a transponder issue with that? They were going to try and fix it on the pit stop. From memory, I think to recall somebody talking about a transponder glitch. But I think more of a concern, certainly, is 47. It's leading on the road. You're back aboard with Mike Jordan. But for Bill Shepard and Nick Padmore, if they miss time this, then they're going to cop a whopping penalty for not stopping within the window. Well, remember, in all the chaos and confusion of the earlier accident and the resulting safety car, the timing screens were changed a little bit, but everybody can access the TSL timing information on their phones, for example, on the pit wall. No TV monitors here at Goodwood for the teams down in pit lane. No perish the thought on a pencil and a clipboard. That's how we have to do this. A proper good old-fashioned manual lap job. Over the line goes this battle on the second place. Ollie Bryant putting up a really good defence, isn't he? He's not making life easy for Mike Jordan at all, but of course the, the other problem for Mike here is that Lotterer is driving away up the road in the distance and he can't do anything about it while he's stuck behind this Cobra. Yeah, and that would be driving Mike absolutely wild, but Ollie Bryant doing a fantastic job. I always say it's so much harder to be the hunted than the hunter, and he is not giving Jordan an inch. Out of St Mary's, they will come towards Lamont in a moment. Again, Mike Jordan just closing up to the left-handed element. He rides the curves. Both of them, of course, have done many miles in these cars, so they know them inside out. Nigel Rubin prepares the TVR that Mike Whittaker owns. Mike Jordan behind the wheel a bit. Brakes starting to look up. Yeah, the brakes is glowing bright red on Jordan's TVR. So he's a bit of 
see now. Does he drop back and cool them, or does that spur him on to get past this Cobra even more? Not exactly suggesting that Mike is not trying, but uh, Oli Bright's got the answer at the moment. This is the problem in a long one-hour race. You know, the brakes are pretty rudimentary on these cars, and they do. Obviously, they're stopping a very heavy vehicle from huge top speeds, and they do fade quite early. There's some pretty clever material out there, pretty clever brake pads, and the guys will maximise the cooling, the ducting, what the rules allow them to. In the meantime, the drivers got to make the best job of it that they can. Again, there's the tail look as you look down from that lovely high shot as they round man to the corner. Nose to tail, coming onto the back part of the circuit towards forward water. Jordan. Follow them. Sorry, uh, I was just going to say Lotter, meanwhile, effortlessly just banging in 124 after 124 out front, and he is gone. Jordan to the inside, is this the move? Yes, 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 he's done it at last. Through he goes. Mike Jordan goes through into second place. Ollie Bryan having a go at getting that position back nearly went around the outside of the left-hander at St Mary's and he gets the switch back now, he's on the better line, he'll be able to break, he look, watch for the cutback, can he carry more speed out of Lavent, Jordan had to go defensive on the way in, that will force his car wide on the way out, as you can see from this rear-facing camera from Jordan's car, that gave Bryan a little look up the inside on the way out, but Jordan got the power down, now down the straight, he's got a traffic, ignore for the moment the Shepherd Padmore Cobra because that still does not seem to have made a pit stop. So as the cars come into the chicane, either that has got a glitch with its transponder or genuinely they mucked up on the window, but you can't see how it's in the lead if it hasn't stopped. But over the timing line then goes Mike Jordan and now look, he is getting away. He's finally, finally, finally done it and he's away, clear of the Cobra, but he's got to make up over six and a half seconds to Lotra. Yeah, and this fantastic aerial shot as it just tracks those two cars through the chicane, illustrated exactly the strengths and the weaknesses. The Cobra is pretty quick down the straights. It's not too bad in the quick corners, but in the switch, slow, sorry, the slow switch back of the chicane, CVR proving much more nimble and it exited with a good car length or two to its advantage. So in the meantime then, it is uh, now number 18 in the lead of the race and the number 47 Cobra is dropping down on our timing screen to fifth place. Now is that because the penalty has been applied, I wonder, missing the window? It's still staying out though, it's still not shown as having made a stop, it's very quirky this. Meanwhile, this aerial shot showing how gentle the corners are here at this very old-fashioned style racing circuit. The track width not too wide compared to the modern Grand Prix circuits we see in front. Mike Jordan is the man second. There he is. 6.6 seconds at the start of the lap. There third is number one of Ollie Bryant coming out of lap corner now. And then fourth should be the 72 Black Cobra in the hands of Andrew Jordan. Now, Ollie Bryan's best hope at this stage of catching Mike Jordan is to hope that he struggles with brake fade in the TVR because those discs are still glowing bright, bright red. And with eight or so minutes to go, they're going to be starting to fade. That brake pedal will be going a little bit long. It's a very nervous feeling for the driver as you commit to your braking point, particularly the long, heavy stop down at the end of the back straight. You really want to feel immediate retardation from a very firm brake pedal. It doesn't offer either of those two things. The heart skips a beat for a moment or two as you try to get the nose into the apex. Right, a quick update about the Nick Padmore Cobra. Uh, as far as we know, it has done its pit stop, but it's got a transponder that's not working, so it's not tripped the beam. So now that it's dropped back into fifth, that is a legacy of serving its two minutes. So it's fallen into fifth place. Uh, so that's OK, that has done the pit stop. As you see now, uh, Mike Jordan wriggling his way through the back markers, trying to escape from Ollie Bryant. We've got seven more minutes on the clock in what has turned out to be a very busy race. The lead gap has come down by a nap, hasn't it? It's down to 6.3, so Mike Jordan not giving up. There is Nick Padmore, so that now is the fifth-place Cobra. Nick Padmore lapping on the last lap fractionally quicker than Andrew Jordan, and the margin between those two you know, just under three seconds. That's quite a tall order, isn't it? Nick Padmore and Bill Shepard's Cobra, actually that thing looking very nicely set up. Molly Bryant's Cobra just a little stiffer, which gives a lot of advantage in the quick corners here at Goodwood. Harder to get the power down, meanwhile Nick Padmore looked to sort of take a set, a little bit of body roll, and having taken that set, it sits there rather than bouncing and hopping. 
So again, Oli Bryant tries to claw back that ground against the TVR Griffith, Mike Jordan hanging on a second place. And of course, the last thing Mike really needs when he's trying to go after the leader is being distracted by this car in his mirrors, thinking about making the move because Oli Bryant again closes up at the chicane. Absolutely, and this is what I was worried about for Mike Jordan. Are his brakes fading? Because you would not normally expect to see the Cobra gaining track position on it on the way into the chicane under braking. So look back from the TVR, there is Oli Brandt behind, still pushing on, and the Jason Plato, Craig Davis, Chevrolet, a 10-second penalty for contact with the chicane barriers to be added on at the end of the race. So we play have that again just to understand the trigger. Yeah, because as you say, they're both very capable, experienced drivers, said a bit strange, but it looks as though Phil Keane was out on a, a, a real mission to try and uh, get up through the traffic in that car that Chris Baton had started. Now, Nick Padmore in the meantime, how's he doing? relative to Andrew Jordan. He took four tenths out last time, so he is bringing down that gap as the two of them come out of the chicane. There is Holly Brown going through. He's not dropping away too much from Mike Jordan, and the lead gap has gone up now to seven seconds. There is Mike Jordan still in the second spot. Third is Oliver Bryant then. So it's the uh, number one Cobra in third place. Now, Oli Bryant is nearly four seconds ahead of Andrew Jordan, who is there. But remember, there is a penalty, and we're trying to get the amount of penalty to be added onto number one, which could just drop it behind at the end, depending on how serious the penalty is. If it's only a few tenths, it's neither here or there, really. But uh, if it's really serious, then number one will fall down the order. So we're trying to get to the bottom of what penalty is coming Oli Bryant's way. Well, I'm also keeping an eye on the timing screens for messaging from the stewards regarding Lotterer because you've got to have gained, surely, two seconds, three seconds by not going through the chicane, just straight lining it. Will he have lifted out? What would you, David, if you had... What would you do if you had a seven-second lead? Would you deliberately and clearly, obviously, lift out of the throttle in the following half a lap just to make it clear? Yep, I acknowledge what I did. It wasn't on purpose. I didn't want to gain a an advantage, so I've actually given that time back in the form of a lift off the gas, or do you just go flat out, try to maximise the cushion to your nearest rivals, so if you get a penalty at the end of the race, hopefully you had enough in hand and you don't lose a position, lose a win. I think I'll do the latter, I think I'll push on and argue about it later, because it's less easy, I would have thought, to visibly prove, without looking at the data, that you did lift off, whereas giving the place back is a lot more obvious, so I think I'd go with the latter and then argue later. What would you do? Go for it, Nelson, for forgiveness. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. In second place, it is going to be the Mikes, Whitaker and Jordan. There's the TVR Griffith. Mike Whitaker started, Mike Jordan brings it home. And third on the road to Andrew Smith and Ollie Bryant, but there's a penalty looming for that car, so we will await confirmation.